age of deadly radar-guided missiles, electronic warfare has taken on a new importance. This video ordnance program looks at the little-known world of the aviators of the United States Air Force in Europe who perform the dangerous electronic warfare mission. In modern air combat, radar is the principal means to detect and track opposing aircraft. Ground-based radars find aircraft, then vector fighters against them to intercept and shoot them down. Even if the aircraft pass through the barrier of fighters, they encounter a defensive wall of radar-directed guns and radar-guided missiles. For ground attack aircraft to survive in this deadly arena, enemy radars must be suppressed. This is the job of electronic warfare. Electronic warfare aims to blind the enemy by jamming or destroying their radars. Without radar, the enemy will not know where attacking aircraft are located and will not be able to shoot them down with radar-directed missiles or gunfire. The United States Air Force began using airborne electronic warfare in World War II. Aircraft used to hunt for radar were called ferrets. During the Vietnam War, the growing threat posed by radar led to the formation of the first wild weasel units, so named because of their link to the earlier ferret aircraft. It was the wild weasel versions of the F-105 that bore the brunt of the anti-radar missions over Vietnam. Unlike the ferrets, the wild weasels not only located enemy radars, but attacked them with guns and missiles. The Vietnam experience has led the United States Air Force to devote a significant number of squadrons to this difficult mission. The United States Air Force in Europe deploys the 52nd Tactical Fighter Wing for the Wild Weasel role. In modern air warfare, an attack mission is performed by different types of aircraft forming a strike package. The strike package includes attack aircraft to deliver bombs against targets. Fighters defend the attack aircraft and the strike package from enemy fighters. And finally, the third element of the strike package, the electronic warfare aircraft, protect the fighters and bombers of the strike package from the radar threat. Our job is to support other strike packages. Uh, people have to realize that electronic warfare is what the guys in the Pentagon and, and the bigger guys like to call a force multiplier. If we were to send a package by itself, into a specific target area without electronic uh, warfare support from wild weasels, EF-111s, or compass call, their uh, rate of destruction or their rate of being engaged by the enemy is astronomical versus when we're on station doing our job taking out the enemy's eyes, uh, it being extremely low. In other words, we allow that third or fourth man to get to his target uh, pretty much unscathed, and that's why we're there. Electronic warfare tactics are based on a triad of aircraft. The wild weasels attack and destroy radars, the EF-111 Ravens jam the radars electronically, and the EC-130 Compass Call jams the enemy communication nets that connect the radars to the enemy missile batteries. Its importance, of course, can't be understated. Without us, there'll be unacceptable losses on the part of other ground attack aircraft or penetrating interdiction type aircraft. The assignment of the Wild Weasel pilots is one of the most dangerous in the field of tactical air power. The Wild Weasel motto, first in, last out, tells the story. The Wild Weasels will be the first element of the strike package to enter enemy airspace, paving the way for the attack force. And they will be the last to leave, acting as a defensive electronic rear guard. We go out uh, to a, an assigned area, to our target area. Uh, we usually go out there first and uh, ahead of a package. Uh, and uh, our job is to locate those radars and bring them down, suppress the radars, kill them if we can. Um, and it's, the other airplanes are dependent on us to keep those SAMs down for them as they go through uh, to their targets. So we're out there on the front line uh, for most of the time uh, while we're flying. The success of the wild weasels in Vietnam 
convinced the Air Force to include this novel mission as part of its normal peacetime force structure. In fact, the United States Air Force in Europe is the only one in NATO with dedicated anti-radar units. It's a pretty unique uh, fact we're the only ones in the Euro European theater that do this kind of stuff. Uh, probably three other units in the, in the whole world that uh, are dedicated uh, solely for uh, uh, knocking out radar, radar sites. And uh, it's the only one in Europe, one in California, and one in the Philippines, and that's it. After Vietnam, equipment changed, but the Wild Weasel mission remained the same. The F-4 Phantom had been the United States Air Force's primary fighter aircraft in Vietnam. With the arrival of the newer F-15 Eagle fighter in the late 1970s, the Phantoms switched roles, becoming Wild Weasels instead. The aircraft is getting old, but uh, with a proper crew, a uh, good front seater and good back seater, I think it's still a very viable aircraft, and uh, I wouldn't be afraid to take on anybody with it. The Phantom is well suited to the electronic warfare role. It is a large aircraft, capable of carrying the many electronic sensors needed to detect enemy radar emissions. Equally important, it has a second crewman who can monitor the many sensors as the pilot flies the aircraft. This second crewman is called the EWO, which stands for Electronic Warfare Officer. Different phases of the flight are going to require different uh, inputs from either the front seat or the back seater. To a large degree, the Wild, Wis Wild Weasel mission is specifically an electronic warfare officer, or EWO's job. My task as a pilot is going to be get, to get him safely into the area and safely back. Once we start getting uh, approaching the target area, there's not a lot that I'm going to be doing specifically for the mission. He is going to be tasked for almost everything. Um, when I get out into the area, I'll be responsible for like terrain avoidance because we are going to be very low. We will be dodging trees, telephone poles. We will need to get behind hills to hide from other radar emitters. So I'll be responsible for doing a lot of that. In addition, I'll be responsible for searching for any air-to-air uh, -air threats that may be trying to sneak up on us. And I'll be looking around in all directions trying to find that. I'll also be looking for any air-to-ground threats, any, uh, anybody on the ground that may be shooting at us or any missiles. His job in the back is uh, compounded by the fact that he has no forward visibility. And um, that's because it's taken up by all the unique equipment that we have. He's going to be operating the radar while he's out there searching for air threats. He's going to be operating all our navigation systems while we're out in the area. And in addition, he's going to be operating all the wild weasel specific ordnance that we have, the avionics. And uh, at any given time, for a junior guy, it, working just on radar, just on navigation, is a full-time mission. So you start putting somebody in the back seat of a wild weasel, and you've got to have somebody that really knows what's going on if you expect to survive as an air crew. the F-4 was the only wild weasel aircraft. A pair of F-4s would work as a hunter-killer team. Specially modified F-4Gs acted as the hunter, sniffing out enemy radars, while the F-4E fighters carried the weapons to attack the radars. In recent years, the 52nd Tactical Fighter Wing in Spangdalem, Germany, has teamed the F-4G Phantom with the smaller F-16 Fighting Falcon. The smaller F-16 is more agile than the older F-4 and more capable of defending the hunter-killer team against enemy fighters. This new configuration took some adjustment. I think the hardest part for me to transition to that was trying to transition to the relative size and the difference. And when you start flying with F-4s and other F-4s, you you learn to visualize the turns and how fast they can turn and how quickly they can react. 
When you first start flying with an F-16 that's got an instantaneous turn rate, an instantaneous acceleration, you can no longer predict like you used to with other aircraft where he's going to end up. And he's uh, significantly smaller than we are, so that makes it very hard to keep him in sight, especially in German weather where the visibility may be very low or the cloud decks. And so if you start pushing him out too far, it gets to be very challenging to keep him in position where he can react quickly to threats behind you, threats that may be shooting at you, or to get him into position where he can employ his ordnance. Both the F-4 and F-16 are armed for the Wild Weasel mission. Although the F-16 is primarily responsible for attacking the radar sites, the F-4s provide backup and can carry out the anti-radar attack as well. The F-4 uh, is the primary uh, Wild Weasel uh, platform. Uh, his job is uh, primarily to seek out the uh, surface-to-air missiles. Uh, he can also destroy them, uh, but uh, he primarily finds the, uh, the SAMs. Uh, and then he passes information to the F-16 so that he can also shoot his harms and uh, kill the SAMs. We work as a team. Uh, they can uh, put ordnance on uh, the target as well as us. Uh, they pass us information and then that enables us to put our, our ordnance, our uh, harms on target too. The environment of the Wild Weasel mission is different from that of other fighters. The Wild Weasel team often operates at very low altitudes using terrain features such as hills to mask their aircraft from enemy radars. Flying low to the ground is uh, and it's exciting in its own right just because of the rush of the ground going by you. Um, flying air to air though is, to me, that's what a fighter pilot really is. Uh, I enjoy flying air to ground though because it offers me a chance to diversify and, and uh, it keeps all my skills home, air to air and air to ground, because you have to do both to win the war. The F-16's contribution to the Wild Weasel mission is tailored to its particular virtues. It is a small, very agile fighter, ideally suited to either dogfighting or treetop level attack. Because the Wild Weasels will be at the very tip of an attacking strike package, the Wild Weasel team will have to be able to defend itself against enemy fighters. In order to get to a target area, you're going to have to fight your way there, and uh, part of that is uh, uh, is uh, flying air to air uh, and uh, defending yourself and uh, if necessary be offensive uh, in order to get to the target area. We do quite a bit of air to air training. A squadron on a hull is so anywhere from 30 to 50 percent of our sorties would be a, a ballpark figure. Uh, air to air training is of course uh, basic to any kind of uh, application of aerial tactics. If you can fly a good air to air sortie then you'll probably be able to do other missions very well. The F-16 represents a new generation of fighter aircraft, nearly a decade more advanced than the F-4 Phantom. It is the first combat aircraft to employ fly-by-wire controls, a method of flight controls relying on computer-assisted stabilization instead of the conventional mechanical and hydraulic systems. Not surprisingly, the F-16 has been dubbed the electric jet. We call it the last of the sports models. It's uh, extremely easy to fly. Uh, very sophisticated electronics, avionics suite make it uh, a system that doesn't require a whole lot of attention on the part of the pilot to, to flying the airplane. It gives us a lot of uh, freedom to be looking outside and working on the, the tactical portion of our mission rather than um, trying to fly the airplane itself. It is an age-old rule of air combat that it's the enemy you don't see who is your greatest danger. For this reason, the F-16 was designed to give the pilot unequaled visibility from the cockpit. You get an excellent view. Uh, the way you're sitting out here, you really can't even see your wings, so you have an incredible amount of uh, field of view around you, either to your right, to your left, and in front of you, and even behind you because you're sitting above most of the most of the fuselage of the aircraft. So it, it offers you the best view of any aircraft uh, in the Air Force now. Well, it's different than most airplanes in that you don't really sit inside it, you sit on top of it. There's very little airplane around you and the canopy rails are in fact down around your hips. So you have a sensation of being out in space all by yourself. We think of it as being on the tip of a pencil and you, it's almost like the airplane is attached to you. Uh, because of the nature of the flight controls, uh, fly-by-wire, a stick that doesn't move, you have the sensation of thinking the airplane instead of flying, and it's so responsive. If you want to go somewhere, it does it. So it's very easy to fly.
The complexity of wild weasel missions, even during peacetime training, requires considerable preparation. Each mission begins with a pre-flight briefing. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, hack, two, six. Okay, just for a general and a brief overview, our mission today is uh, to support strikers who are going to be uh, passing through our target area. Um, we want to suppress threats for a 10-minute uh, period and uh, just briefly want to do a corridor ops for, for that entire 10-minute TOS. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we want no air-to-air -air or air-to-ground losses uh, en route in the target area and our return uh, flight home. <coughs> For our overview, start taxi takeoff will be a squadron standard start on time, and the uh, first uh, call you should hear from me is on red one minute prior to taxi. I'll set up the scenario so that uh, we go wild weasel versus fighter. I'll designate that. I'll designate the blot so that we're avoiding each other by a thousand feet. Okay. Primary objective there is to uh, practice our commit criteria. I want the uh, fighter to be uh, either persistent or non-persistent band in that case for the weasel to make that decision whether he can avoid or whether he's going to be forced to emerge. Okay, uh, now in the target area, Craig. Uh, we're facing a divisional size uh, threat array with all the associated radars and the surface air missiles, AAA. Okay, ALE-40, ALQ-131, pod, uh, all your uh, self-protection equipment set up in accordance with the uh, EC standards. And obviously have your uh, Weapons delivery switch is all set for uh, harm deliveries. Shot timing, uh, we want to space our shots uh, to cover our time on station. We've got 10 minutes in the area and uh, want to be getting missiles off uh, to cover that whole period. First one we'll call a kilo type attack, basically in trail shot. Uh, you'll see us turn inbound to the threat with no other visual signals. You'll end up in about a one to two mile trail there and uh, the preparatory signal for the shot is a wing rock. Okay, when you see the wing rock, go ahead and set your switches for uh, the primary threat if we break left and the secondary threat if we break right.
The wild weasel can significantly impact the success or failure of a mission because we are the only unit around, we're the only type of aircraft or system available in the world now that can go after these mobile emitters and these mobile uh, AAA and SAM sites, pick them out, identify them, and either take them out with our missiles or else send in some other uh, uh, aggressors to take them out as well. Uh, the strike package is going to try to punch a hole in there, and that's kind of what we want to try to do is open the hole, make it safer for them to pass through, and then come on back. We're the first ones in. We do. We can protect ourselves air to air. With the last ones out, again, we can protect ourselves. However, it's a little discomforting to go in there without any other air assets guarding you and to come out behind everybody else, including any stragglers that they may have or somebody who's sustained battle damage. Because although we're going to try to protect ourselves, given a chance, we'll try to protect anybody who's coming out that's on our side. Uh, so it uh, makes for a lot of, uh, a lot of work. Uh, we'd <laughs> we'll take as many harms into battle as we can. The harm is, and we like to call it one of those wish you were dead weapons because once it comes off the rail if uh, the emitter is still up there and, and emitting at the time it comes into impact the harm will not only destroy it explosively in some instances has been known to spear the radar antenna itself it's that accurate so we will take as many harms out there as we can being a good wild weasel crew you have to be able to talk and coordinate and there's just so much going on and and all the TAF I think it's probably the single hardest job that there is be very good at it because you just have to know so much. Not only do we use everybody else's ordinance, but we use our own, and so we have to know everything about all of that as well as all the threat systems as well. There is more than one way to deal with enemy radars. Wild weasels destroy enemy radars one at a time. It is often critical to blind large numbers of enemy radars, even if only temporarily. Electronic jamming aircraft emit powerful bursts of energy that flood the antennas of enemy radars, making it impossible for them to distinguish targets. In the United States Air Force, this is the job of the EF-111 radar. It's the aircraft that takes out the enemy's eyes. Uh, we jam the radars. The wild weasels hit the radars with missiles, and the uh, compass call basically takes out the communication links uh, that the enemy uh, has set up so that he can communicate between himself and uh, his airborne forces. The primary role of the EF-111 is to jam radars to mask, say, a group of F-111s who will be dropping bombs, to mask them so that the enemy does not detect them on their radars. We will go out and uh, orbit off uh, in, in an area where the uh, strikers are going to go in and drop their bombs. And at whatever the frequencies of those specific radars are, we will jam just some random frequencies and noise. And uh, hopefully, by doing this, the scopes of the enemy radars will become so cluttered up that they won't be able to pick out where the strikers are. The EF-111 Raven was developed on the basis of the F-111 strike aircraft. Instead of carrying bombs and missiles, its interior has been packed with a sophisticated array of electronic jamming equipment. As in the case of the F-4 Wild Weasel, the EF-111 has a crew of two to accomplish its mission. First of all, you have the pilot. He's basically in charge of flying the jet, making sure we get there on time, safely, 
and uh, has all the controls over on his side. My primary job on the right side is to make sure that he keeps us safe, that he gets us there on time. Just I make sure that he is doing his job. I also have the role of uh, taking care of the electronics equipment. I run all the jamming equipment, making sure that the jamming is working the way it's supposed to. Wild weasels operate at low altitudes to hide from enemy radar. Ravens operate at higher altitudes so their jamming systems will cover a wide area below them. When the aircraft was uh, redesigned as an EF-111, uh, it kind of changed our entire role uh, as an F-111 type of platform. Uh, F-111s have a tendency to go low levels, fast, ingress into target areas, drop bombs, and then come back out uh, medium or high level. Uh, EF-111s, however, uh, although we maintain the same type of terrain following radar capability as well as low level uh, altitude and airspeed, uh, our mission is pretty much medium to high altitude. So um, we can use low level as an advantage toward ourselves in defensive reactions. However, we like to do most of our mission medium to high altitude. Uh, that's the way we work. To support a strike package during its attack, the wild weasels will go in first to destroy particularly dangerous radar sites. The ravens will orbit near the attack area, broadcasting jamming signals at the many other radars not directly attacked by the wild weasels. Other jamming aircraft, such as the Compass Call, will jam the radio links between radar sites and command centers, preventing the enemy radar net from coordinating its activities. The mission of electronic warfare pilots may not seem as glamorous as that of fighter pilots. Their aircraft lack the offensive punch of attack aircraft. But it is the electronic wizardry of the wild weasels and the ravens that can make the critical difference between defeat and victory in modern air combat. <laughs>